Hello everyone, I'm Tony Southcott. And I'm Kmet, and welcome to the Gorehounds Playground here in Fort Collins, Colorado. This is Booze and Booze, where we pair different alcoholic drinks with our reviews of horror movies. And this week we're talking about The Black Coat's Daughter. It's a movie from Oz Perkins and has the star of Sabrina the Teenage Witch on Netflix, Karen Shipka. Now let's go to the Gorehounds Kitchen where I'll show you this week's drink. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Gorehounds Kitchen. Today I am excited about our drink because I'm calling it batshit crazy. It's really simple and we're just gonna get started. First, you're gonna do two ounces of fireball whiskey. And then you're gonna top it off with some hard cider. The reason I chose this drink was because it has spiciness from the cinnamon whiskey and then a little bit of sweet from the apple cider and then a little touch of antifreeze that's inside the fireball and there you go. That shit crazy. Although this series is not that old, we've actually covered a lot of possession movies. And as far as an indie possession movie, this one had some really interesting wrinkles to it. like. There were things that felt weird to me, but it really had some cool stuff to, to say and a lot of uh, cool ways of doing possession that wasn't so blatantly, like, exorcist. Yeah, and for me, I think this is a possession movie done right. Uh, it wasn't over the top. It was really moody. It was very dark. Um, you kind of don't know if it's really possession or if not until they give you a few... Uh, clues and I really like that. I think that if somebody were to actually be possessed, they would be a little bit more subtle than most movies show. <laughs> yeah, it's like if you if you think about like the motives of a demon or something like that. If they've waited a thousand years to find a vessel, are they really just going to find a thirteen-year-old and like make them go crazy and throw up on everybody? There's a little bit of that in this, but it's it's nice that there's just a different flavor to it, and that this movie was very patient. It was very patient. I think that's the perfect word for it. And it is going to be a slow burn for some people out there. This movie isn't going to be for everybody. But as far as uh, as far as being entertaining for us, I think it actually did hit the mark pretty well. Mm -hmm. I thought the the acting did a really good job. Uh, Kieran, Kiernan from Kiernan Sabrina Shipka. did an amazing job. She didn't really have that many lines at all. But the, her portrayal of this person was not only sad, but empathetic and um i i really enjoyed her performance in this yeah and it's so like it's such a subtle so quiet like usually like you've got the like your mother sucks cocks in hell like all the anger and everything and this one most of the time like you almost need subtitles to hear what she's saying sometimes because it's just like it's just little and then she says super creepy things mm -hmm. like it's like and you're your parents are dead already. Or, like, I'm trying to remember what it, what it was. It was like, uh, you had time, but it's too late. Your yeah. parents are dead. Something like that. And, and just the way she mumbles some of this stuff with such certainty is a really weird combination of, like, fragility and unease and just scary feeling things. It's it's so strange, but it was really cool. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it and you kind of got little hints of the person that she was before all this happened and I thought, and especially with the way that the other characters interacted with her, is that the way that she is right now is very different to what she has been and it's very uneasy. And whenever you've got this other character, like the girl that's supposed to be watching her, which, by the way, this is a very Rose. small cast. Mm -hmm. Like, you've got Rose, you've got a couple uh, nuns, a priest, and then, like, this this couple Bill Remar's character, which that guy's very, like, I didn't know what they were trying to pull with that, and it, it was it was just a different performance from him because he's usually a very cocky villain, and in this he's sort of a vulnerable dad that feels like it could turn at any point into a villain. Like, the movie doesn't follow some of the tropes that you would expect for kind of a damaged girl and all that and it lets you kind of see how it breathes and finds its way to a, a very strange and interesting conclusion. Yeah, it um it layered a couple of different stories that I thought was very clever. Um it has a few time slippages that you have no idea what's really going on until the end and I really appreciate that. Uh this movie 
took me by surprise on a few moments, which does not happen very often, I think. I got really creeped out by it last night. I was watching it about midnight and by myself in my living room, and I gotta say, I could feel the tension from this movie. And it didn't quite freak me out as much, mostly because anytime I see, like, uh, demonic stuff, I, like, I keep wanting people to embrace the Lovecraftian thing, not the Pazuzu-type demon. But it still was effective, and it was interesting, and it, it, it worked, especially in the context of this movie i'm just trying to find cool elder tours <laughs> i and i also liked how they kind of repeated the same story a couple times but they did it through the perspective of the different characters and so when you're looking at the girl who's been possessed you get to see that she's seeing this demon throughout the time that is going on and i thought that was i love when they have subtle scares like that that it's not it's creepy because you just see it in the background and it has this hum and everything. Um, it's the presence in the room versus the giant monster in front of you, like, reveal that some things do. Yeah, exactly. And if you don't have a monster that's worth putting entirely on camera, you can make it a hell of a lot creepier having it be part of the background or having it be kind of sort of a subtext or a presence or something like that. Like, I, I, I honestly think it, it usually works a lot better whenever you don't show the monster entirely and mm -hmm. this movie is kind of like this movie did such a good job of that yeah i and and talk about brutal the 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 actual violent scenes in this are extremely violent and remorseful or lack of remorse right yeah lack of remorse and just it's cold cold and brutal and you see the face of the person that's doing these things and there's nothing. Yeah, like I, that's one of the things that was most remarkable about this actress and probably part of why she got Sabrina, not that the characters are even the same at all, but like that range to be able to do incredibly messed up things and have it look like she's sorting her laundry or something mm -hmm. like that. Just like that sort of like a weird sort of zen despondence that you would get with an actual psychopath as part of possession. Mm -hmm. And I... I always have a thing where very violent stabbings are way more raw to me in movies than like shootings or anything like that usually. Like The Lodge kind of showed the shooting thing a little differently, but I'll probably bleep that out anyway. <laughs> but like there's, there's stuff where a stabbing is so close and personal that it's just too raw whenever you get like right up to somebody like and she makes it seem both cold and impersonal but also just like right up against somebody almost like intimate and it's so weird how she can do both yeah exactly and um i gotta say something that i really appreciated with this movie is that they kind of maybe a good third of the way through they let you know that somebody's not going to survive in a different sort of sense and they're like oh shit how is this going to go down when is it going to go down what's going to happen xyz and i really appreciated that because it gave it more tension yeah like it's it's not even foreshadowing. It's a blatant, like, this is going to happen. And I think that they were able to keep the pace fresh with this movie because of the interlaced stories. If this was told chronologically, I don't know if it would have the same effect. I agree. That was a really good editing job. Yeah. So, like, whenever you've got a strong editor, you've got some actors that know what they're doing, you've got people that are patient, you can make... And you can tell this is a lower-budget movie. And that's fine. Like, they never they never exceeded what they needed, and I think that they did a fantastic job getting there. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty pretty. The outdoor scenes of, I'm guessing it's in New York? Yeah, it's upstate New York. Yeah, upstate New York in winter was really, really pretty and well done. It, it, it was some, a good contrast. Yeah, some scenes even look like they would be in black and white, but they're it's not a black and white movie. But that's how kind of dismal and muted this entire... S story is really yeah it's not exactly like sunshine in the winter and all that no, stuff it's not just at all. dark dark cloudy yeah um the cool thing about this right now is that it is on netflix that's where we watched it and i gotta say for being something that's on a free excuse me for being something that's on a uh, available streaming platform it was really good yeah there's been a like there's been a lot of issues with Netflix just throwing anything up there that's like that's marginal and it's it's always something where you're looking for that diamond in the rough you're trying to find something that's a really solid movie and it's hard to find especially in the horror genre there's so much just schlock out there especially on Netflix so 
I was very pleasantly surprised with this movie. Yeah, if you get the chance to watch it, I, I highly recommend watching it. So, okay, did you like it? I liked it. There, like, there are some like nitpicks that you could get, but it, was, it wasn't enough to make me not enjoy the movie. Mm -hmm. Was it scary? I didn't think so. You didn't like, think it was scary? I was watching this at like 2 a.m. alone, and I was just chilling. Mm. Yeah. I thought it was creepy. I, I definitely got creeped out by myself in my apartment. Um, if you want something that's going to kind of like get to the back of your neck when you're alone, that's definitely it. Yeah. And that, like, it just doesn't happen to me that often. That's not an indictment of this movie. It's just, it's rare that a horror movie gets under my skin like that. Mm -hmm. It's what we're always searching for, but this one didn't quite unsettle me like that. And uh, rewatchability moderate like i feel like i saw what they were doing and maybe i'd be able to notice some things that are interesting before but i feel like i got what i needed from the movie the first time mm -hmm. i feel like this is a movie that i could probably come back to once every couple of years yeah. and still enjoy it very thoroughly yeah it'd be something that's like on your dvd shelf that you're like oh yeah i remember that one yeah i'll like, pop it in or something yeah, yeah I, I definitely think so yeah uh it is on netflix right now like i said and we recommend you watch it right yeah definitely Perfect. Awesome. Well, if you liked this video, go ahead and press the subscribe button to our channel and the bell if you want to get notifications for any future videos. Also, if you really like us, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash Thank you, guys. Bye.